So I've got a spot of lunch, uh, packed, and uh, a flask, as the cafe at the airport's not open today. So let's get uh, let's get in the car, get the sat nav fired up, get the postcode in, and let's get uh, down to the airport. <laughs> is a gyro or gyro plane well from my understanding and my limited knowledge of them so far um, and what I've learned is that it's basically a cross between a helicopter and a aeroplane uh, the rotors above the actual aircraft aren't actually motorized so they they work on auto rotation which basically gives the aircraft its lift and the thrust comes from the engine so there's a separate engine with a propeller that uh, faces rearwards and that gives the uh, gives the aircraft its thrust so yeah so it kind of you have to take off and land like an aeroplane um, but you have got certain movement um, and flexibility of a helicopter uh, they come in two or three formats single seat and double seats either tandem or side by side depending on the size of the engine uh, will depend obviously on the speed that the aircraft can fly at and they're pretty much good for most weather conditions as well um, obviously other than thunderstorms and heavy rain etc but uh, yeah they can fly in more conditions than a lot of fixed wing aircraft as they don't get affected too much by turbulence basically I I got to know about them by seeing a news report uh, a couple of weeks ago about a guy that's flown around the world on one or in one shall I say um, and broken a world record by doing so and um, so I looked into them a little bit further. So the reason why I've sort of decided to come along today and find out a bit more about them and get a flight in one is, um, although I love paramotoring, um, it is very, very weather dependent. And uh, obviously here in the UK, we get a lot of wind, a lot of uh, you know, showery weather, that kind of thing. And um, yeah, it's very, sometimes difficult to sort of get up in the paramotor on a regular basis. So I'm just kind of thinking that this might be another way of being able to get a flight in on a on more regularly. Yes, it's more expensive. Yes, it's going to take longer to get a license, which you actually need to fly one of these things. But it hopefully will give me uh, yeah, more opportunity to fly, more opportunity, I think, to uh, have more adventures with flying, flying further, etc. So we're going to give it a go and see what happens, see what, whether we like it or not to start with. gyro um, yeah it's always good to know when you uh, when you meet somebody and if they're going to be instructing you for some time to be able to gel with somebody and um, I think me and him have got uh, very similar views on stuff <laughs> outside of flying as well so anyway um, yeah we'll hopefully be going far flying very shortly so uh, we start around here this is the pilot side here okay so because because we're next to the fuel bay I'll check the fuel first and you can see if I just give it a bit of a rock. Oh look it is, I must have done refueled on oh, yeah, it's it's right. oh, right. yeah. So good. Yeah. It's an 80, 80, 80 litre tank, right. which will give you four hours okay. endurance. Yeah. Yep. 
Uh, I'm going to check the first of all the master battery and I'm listening for the wastegate actuation on the turbocharger which gets me right right so that's working mm -hmm. okay and then I would normally if, if there's an aircraft I've not flown before I start checking everything you know here's your throttle just move that don't the door handle your throttle and your brake okay yeah yep this is my throttle here and mm -hmm. that's my brake okay okay mm. okay right okay yeah here's a, a your indicator and a secondary you already indicated. Right, so, they, so these in flight, you want to keep them kind of yes. in line with the exactly. centre of the aircraft. Exactly. Okay. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah. The pitot tube is in here, so we make sure no bumblebees block it. That gives you your airspeed indication. Oh, I see. Right, okay. And landing light, and yep. we make sure that the front wheel is inflated. Yep. Here, first thing I'm looking for, here's the oil reservoir. It's a, it's a dry sump, so the oil comes all the way back into the reservoir. Mm -hmm. And what we do, is I'll just, it's always oh, hugely stiff. Mm -hmm. I'll just check, I did check this before, so I just, I'll just lift it out briefly mm -hmm. to see if there's oil up to there. Yep, we're okay. good. That's back in again. Put that on tight. And we're looking to see if there's water in the header tank, which there is. Okay. Inspection line. To see that everything's looking as it should do. Yep. There's an awful lot to look at, so. Nice, so that'll squeeze through there then, will it? <laughs> this is what happens to me quite a lot. It won't go, you know why? Brakes on? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're just checking to make sure the brakes are working? That's why I did it. <laughs>
so there we go guys that was my first flight in a gyrocopter absolutely amazing piece of kit um, easier to fly than I thought it would be and uh, a lot more comfortable as well actually quite toasty in there but yeah a lot of fun so just to say I'll probably be doing this again at some point So is that that's a uh, that's one as well? Is it over there? Yes, it is. Yeah, that's a that's a tandem that's uh, a road sport. Right. It's owned mm -hmm. by the head of Air Sea Rescue. All oh, right. How's that for an endorsement? Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll have a look around that one then. <laughs> so yeah, we've got another uh, gyrocopter here. This is a tandem version. So basically, the seat sits behind, pilot in front, uh, passenger behind. Hmm. I love it.